Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Kendall and while I usually speak in person at City of Joondalup Libraries, right now we're doing things a bit differently. So the coronavirus pandemic has affected everyone in many ways and one group of people affected is travel writers. So now they're the first to admit that being unable to travel is a privileged problem to have, but when you make your living by travelling most of the year, it is a real problem. The silver lining, though, is that for once these grounded travel writers have time to talk to us. So we've put together the Grounded Travel Writer series. So today, this is Kim Yule. Kim is a writer and YouTuber who spent nearly all of the last few years away from her native United States. She and her husband, Wei, run a YouTube channel called Kim and Wei, documenting their journey, visiting 60 countries together before Kim turns 60 in a few years' time. So, welcome to the Grounded Travel Writer series, Kim. Well, thank you. I'm not sure I want that distinction, but it brought me to you, so I guess it's okay. <laughs> I know. There's a silver lining in everything, so, but I appreciate Absolutely. it. It is frustrating to be grounded at the moment. Um, so, perhaps can you start by telling us where are you and how are you coping with being grounded? So, we are in Descanso, which is a very small small town outside of San Diego, California. It's up in the mountains. It is literally the best place to isolate because you can count the number of cars that go by our house on probably one hand during the day. So <laughs> um, it's my mother-in-law's home because we don't have a home because we are full-time travelers. So when they say stay at home, that means a little something different to us. And how we are coping, I guess that depends on the day, right? I think that's true for us all. We have good days, we have maybe some not so good days. But overall, you know, my other than being stationary and in one place, my day hasn't changed. I still write most days, I still, you know, have income, which I'm very fortunate to have. So there's definitely good uh, pros and cons to this. Overall, I'm happy to spend some time with my mother-in-law. I am admittedly getting the itch, though. So <laughs> like all of us, it's been an adjustment, but we are handling it as best we can. Mm. Yeah, that's good to hear. I hear you on the itch. It is sometimes it's not even that I necessarily would be traveling now. It's the fact that I absolutely can't. <laughs> that is the problem. Like my mother-in-law was. Um, wanted to go to Costco and it, the, the store is really, really bad. And a friend of her said not to go. And she goes, it just makes me mad that I can't go. I don't even really need to go. I just can't. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. feeling that too. Yeah. It's that trapped feeling sometimes, isn't it? So, well, yeah, let's think okay. about some, some better, better earlier times. Can you tell us okay. about um, some of your most memorable travel moments? So I've been thinking about this a lot because I think when People ask me my favorite, my favorite country, my favorite moment. It's sort of like um, picking which one of your kids is your favorite, right? It's really hard to pick one because like, how do you choose between being on the Great Wall of China or maybe having a private tour of a 17th century fortress in Marseille? Hmm. Like, how do you choose? Um, I chose watching the sunset from the Piazza Michelangelo in Florence, Italy. It is a cult-like experience. So first of all, it sits on a hill overlooking the city, so it has the best view of the city, and hundreds of people every day hike up the hill to watch the sunset. There are food vendors and music, and people are toasting each other, and it's just full of so much joy. It has sort of like a mini festival type of atmosphere. Um, but this particular sunset, which sunsets are my thing. I love all sunsets. I think they're all special. But this one, we went to go take our our seats on the steps. And you sometimes have to elbow your way in. But we were there early enough. We had our wine. We were happy. Um, and they started playing the ukulele version of Over the Rainbow. <laughs> Great. Which is a song that we memorialized my brother to. Now, I'm probably going to start to cry now, even, because so I'm sitting there, the sun is setting, the song comes on, I had goosebumps, I'm crying, um, the sun sets, everyone's cheering. It was like, I kept thinking, this is a sign. I'm not sure what it's a sign for, but it's a sign. 
it was magical and I'll never forget it. And I think Florence holds a special place in my heart just because of that one moment. It was really, really special. Mm. Oh, I've never heard you tell that story before, Kim, and I've got goosebumps too. What a special, special moment. It really, it really was. And um, yeah, in fact, I was just telling my husband, I need, we need to go back. I think one of our first destinations, even though there's so many places, might be like, let's just go to Italy. I had a dream the other night that I was flying to Italy and I remember being so happy in my dream and then I woke up. I was so sad. (laughs) I've heard a lot of us are having unusual coronavirus induced dreams at the moment. So um, yeah, it would be nice if it was not a dream you woke up for and you really were on your way to Italy. But uh, one day, one day, hope so. (laughs) All right. Now, um, there's a lot of memorable moments when tra- when you travel, but sometimes the memorable ones are when things go wrong. And I have to say, I have a I have a, a morbid curiosity about stories of when things go wrong because they often turn out to be really interesting, funny stories. So, can you tell me about a time when something did go wrong? So, you know, I really thought about this. I have to say, I think I live under a silver star or something because. For the most part, things have gone right. So you hear wrong, you hear travel. I think you mostly associate that with lost baggage. Mm -hmm. So I definitely have a weird lost baggage story. So I was traveling from Sonia, China, which is a tropical island sort of across from Vietnam. So it's very far south, all the way home to Phoenix. It was about a 39-hour travel day. I was not looking forward to it. It was long, and I get to Sonia, I check in my bags, and I make a point of asking, do I need to claim my bags in Beijing? Because in China, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. There doesn't seem to be a solid, fast rule, but if there is a rule in place, they won't change it. They're like, no, 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 just pick it up in LA. I verified like five times because I just knew something <laughs> was going to go wrong. It's so the it's like instinct of the frequent traveler, isn't it? When you're kind of already <laughs> predicting something's going to go wrong. <laughs> I like, I knew it. I just knew it. So I get to Beijing and I had a long layover. So it's not like I even had to rush through. I had six hours there. So I go to the airport lounge and I'm hanging out and just, doing stuff and then I you know walk around the airport a few times and go back to the lounge that for six hours I go to the gate an hour early because they're a little militant at their airport it's the only country in the world where if everybody's on the plane they will take off early oh wow they will just leave I've never heard yeah. of that gosh I've had it happen. and China is a lineup culture so everybody is there early in line, ready to board. Like they board so fast. But I was there. So I was at the gate about a, it was good. And I like taking off early too. It's I'm not just a little afraid they might forget me one time. <laughs> they haven't yet. So I get to the gate, it's about an hour early and a gate agent comes up to me and says, you know, are you Kim? Yes I am. Did you claim your bag and go through customs and recheck it? And I said, No, because I specifically asked not to do that or like no no you have to do it and I go well do I have enough time can I go do it now well yes you have time but no you can't do it okay why well it's just not going to make it on the plane and I'm like so I'm here it's an hour before departure you know I'm here you have my bag I'll go drive the cart to get it on the plane (laughs) but they it's like they have a method to their madness and there's no seen reason on how to change it so okay no bag we'll put it on the flight it leaves in a few hours it'll get there you know a little bit after you but we'll deliver it to your home in phoenix okay no problem makes la customs quite easy for me because i don't have my bag that's true so okay fine i get on the plane and they came and gave me something uh, a form to fill out. I'm like, should I fill it out now? No, no, no. You can't fill it out until you get to Phoenix. Okay. So we go on our way. I go through customs. Where's your bag? It's stuck in China. <laughs> and then I said, think I'm lying. I'm like, I'm not lying. So I get to Phoenix and I try to fill out um, the form. 
And they're like, no, 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 you can't fill it out until after the next flight. I can't remember exactly, but it was something like I had to wait another four hours before I could fill it out. I said, traveling for 39 hours, I'm not waiting. So I go home to my mom's house. Luckily, I was going to see my mom wearing her clothes. No big deal. I didn't really care. I just wanted to sleep. So the next day I call American and I said, um, is my flight, is my bag coming in? And they're like, we don't have any record of your bag. Oh, no. I'm like, what do you mean you don't have any record of my bag? And I said, so they're like, okay, so they take all my information again. <laughs> they, well, the, chi- the airline, I was flying China, China Southern Airlines. China Southern hasn't released the bag to us. And I'm like, well, go get it. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Literally back and forth for five days. Oh. Luckily, though, I, I did eventually get it. Right. I'm not sure what happened. American had to go do something like extra special because China Southern wasn't releasing the bag. <laughs> oh, no. If only your bag could talk and tell you the tale. I know. Like, <laughs> I, I see my little lonely bag sitting there in some compartment somewhere. Like, just send me home. Yeah, send me yeah, home. yeah. I want to see Kim again. <laughs> but I got some free clothes, shoes, makeup out of it. So, you know, and a story. The, and a story. And it and it wasn't a horrible story. Like, <laughs> just a I confusing. Mean, I, where were you? <laughs> well, and it it does, none of it made sense. I think yeah, that was yeah. the crazy part. It's like just none of it really made sense Mm -hmm. I've heard some similar lost bag stories I've got one of my own where there's nothing about it that makes sense Um, but that's kind of part of the thrill of travel isn't it absolutely I mean I I we check our bags because we live on the road I mean you living out of a backpack it's not an option and we have we carry all of our important stuff with us like our camera gear is usually with us on the plane Um, so if our bags go missing. I figure I can go buy an outfit. It's never a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. I'm surprised that's the only time I've lost a bag. Yes. Because we've been doing it a lot. Touch wood. <laughs> I hope this oh, yeah, is your famous been... last words, words, but yeah. <laughs> wood in this house. <laughs> so yes, you can't be losing a bag right now because there's no travel time. But hopefully, I mean, definitely sometime, hopefully sooner rather than later, we can get out on the road again. So can you tell me a couple of the places you can't wait to explore once we can travel again? So this is a really hard question too, because like so many places, right? I want to go everywhere and I want to go everywhere again. There's So I really had to think about it. So right now, if the craziness of this world did not happen, I would be in Myanmar. And I have mm. wanted to go to Myanmar for a long time. It's really high on my bucket list. So obviously, I'm very disappointed that I'm not there. Mm. Um, you know, it's been closed to Westerners for so long. It's still not really heavily touristed. Like there's just not a lot of tourists that go there because there's a lot of some hoops you have to jump through to get there. So that's really, really of interest to me. But there's other places like um, I want to go on a tr- the Trans-Siberian Railway and I want to go float in the Dead Sea because, mm. like, I just want to feel that weightlessness I have, you know, for that cool thing. I want to go to the Bolivian Salt Flats. There's so many places. But I think, oh, the other place, too, was Bali. I was supposed to go to Bali after Myanmar on my way to Australia. Yes. So <laughs> sad. Like, so sad. So, so many places, obviously a lot of where that next destination is just going to depend on a, who will accept us visitors because our, you know, we're, we're having our spikes are now. So yeah, I don't true. know what that borders are going to be like. Yeah. So we'll just have to play that by ear, but I wouldn't be happy going anywhere really. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I completely understand. Just get on a plane anywhere will do. Who'll have us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I don't even love getting on a plane um, because I do it so much. But like right now, I'm like, God, airplane food sounds so good. Something <laughs> must be really wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, you know something's wrong when suddenly you're craving airline food. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I really hope that you you and we all get to travel again soon. 
and uh, that we don't have to have a grounded travel writer series for too long and that you make it to Australia soon. Yes, please. I want to come. <laughs> Thanks so much for chatting today, Kim. Thank you.